What is up ladies and gents, Mike here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about Guild Wars 2. Why I like it and you might like it as well. And give you some reason why you should not overlook this MMO. I typically do not pick games because of the story, but I never ignore them when they have them. As far as Guild Wars 2, you get a decent story. It's You kind of need to do it for your first character. You decide the level. And I'll, I say this because you get a decent amount of experience and all the gear you need to progress through the game until level 80. Now, playing through your personal story will have you explore your racial starting areas, doing quests, which helps with the immersion if you're that type of player. Guild Wars 2 story is a welcome and nice change to, you know, MMO genre. The only thing it was a little off-putting for me is the way they deliver some of the dialogue. Special occasion. Alan, thanks for coming to see me when I was injured. Hey, that's what friends are for. Besides, did you see the brief? At first, this was a little off-putting for me, at least. Um, I'm typically like cutscene kind of guy. But uh, it did grow on me. Uh, about halfway through the story, I started to in enjoy the way they did it. A little more personable, I, I guess. But if that's not a big deal, you have a plenty a good story here waiting for you to uh, actually play through. Guild Wars 2 is what they want to call free to play. Or <laughs> I say free to start uh, because the base game is absolutely free, which is a, a good thing. Now this kind of monetization can hinder some games uh, that go out for this type of model, but luckily for us, ArenaNet strikes a fair balance in my eyes. Now not everyone agrees, but that's my personal opinion. So the way it looks, the way it works is simple. For free, you get the base game, including all of Central Tyria, except one of the classes, the Revenant, and some end game content. Now. I'll leave a breakdown of the features you can get from the DLCs in the description so it can help you decide on you know the game before you actually decide to go out straight up buy it. So, you know, be sure to ask any other questions if anything I've left out in the actual description uh, in the comments below. Uh, also, some recommendation for new players. Um, start off free. I will say that. Start off free. And if you're enjoying the game and want more, look into the DLC. Now, you can buy the specific content you want. Yes, Guild Wars lets you buy, for the most part, uh, whichever content you want. So use the breakdown to help decide which content you want. Secondly, uh, ArenaNet releases story content called Living Story, which is basically a continuation of the story mid-expansion. Now, the only caveat to this system are uh, episodes can be unlocked for free by simply logging into any character during that kind of like release window of that episode. Now, um, I've been playing the game for a little bit and it seems like I've gotten maybe three or four episodes and they're about two to three months apart, I wanna say. Now, if you come in and you want the previous episodes, you can unlock them for 200 gems, which is the Guild War currency, but that's 200 gems per episode. So be careful, don't expect to go in and buy all the DLC or Living World story for 200 gems. No, that's per episode. So, you know, what this said, the DLC is structured, and I'm sure a lot of people, you know, might agree with me, but I I think it's a good I think it's a good thing. It's it allows last player to play the game and buy which content they want. But do your Googles, please, before you know you decide to buy game and starts diving in trying to spend some money into the actual game so you know google's guys use your google's is one of the biggest reasons why i gave guild wars 2 a chance guild wars 2 does a good job for creating like a pretty world to explore and a lot of your early leveling for a new player will be exactly this they do quest a little differently in this game and most of the quests you will encounter show up as hearts on your map and when you get close enough to these said hearts on the actual map they pops up on your top right of your screen letting you know you're in quest area 
Now the quest can entail all kinds of things like kill this enemy to protect cows or feed cows or gather said food you need to feed the cows. Now this means completing the quest can be a little more refreshing considering that you know most quests in other MMOs entails you just killing mob after mob after mob until you get 10 skins. So Guild Wars 2 definitely breaks up the monotony as far as questing. But besides quest things, there are plenty of things to do when you encounter a new map. Like you have these things called vistas, which are kind of like viewpoints from other games. Uh, name locations like towns, etc. Hero points, which are kind of like challenges that if you complete, grant you skill points to add to your character. They incentivize this type of play by giving you experience, gear, sometimes some crafting material when you fully explore these maps. This includes all the vistas, the name locations, the hero points, the quests, which leads to map completion. Now to get map completion on every map, you unlock world completion, which is a little deeper into the end game system where you need to start creating legendary weapons. Um, this is one of those things you're kind of going to have to do if you want to hit that pinnacle of, of end game. Now the exploration gets a little deeper when you purchase Path of Fire. At level 80, you begin to unlock mounts. Now these aren't like your normal mounts. They're all different. The Raptor will be the first one you unlock, which just happens to be one of my favorites. It's fast and it's perfect for clearing large gaps and it looks pretty dope. Now my favorite, the Griffin, is a flyer and feels amazing. Now when you think of flying, don't think of typical MMO where like World of Warcraft for instance, you know don't think about that think about it more like gliding which means you know you get to a high ground and you leap off and you try to stay airborne as long as you can that sounds fun but it gets better you will be level 80 which is capping your worst too but you do continue to level and it's called mastery to think of this like a paragon from diablo 3 in a sense but instead of actually leveling past level 80 you're actually earning experience towards specific tracks of the mastery. And it just so happens to be masteries for your mounts. You get better and unlock these ranks with said mounts and your mounts will get more and unique skills to use. For example, once you get Raptor and you start spending some mastery points on the Raptor himself, you start to jump a little bit further. You start doing dismount attacks that draw enemies in so these mastery tracks add a little more uniqueness to each mount, but to unlock these mastery ranks, you need to play the game, uh, get some experience. And once you have an actual mastery track maxed out with experience, you will spend said mastery points on them, which are found out in the world and specific to the maps. So if you're trying to level up the Raptor, you need to do experience, you need to play the game and questing and other set things to get an experience in the path of fire expansions so all those little maps you will need to do to get them the mastery and mastery tracks can be made into a whole video by itself talking about where you should spend your points on what skills you should use for your mounts etc but i just wanted to bring this up for the simple reason that this system makes the mounts feel unique from each other and the masteries you earn makes exploring feel that much more rewarding giving you more stuff to do combat is probably the aspect of the game that will hook most people who try Guild Wars 2 now it's hard to compare to other MMOs it is an action base but not quite like Blade and Soul and Black Desert Online but it is a kind of like a hybrid target slash skill action system that is highly reactive and even includes a dodge roll. You still use the tab targeting system to help target your enemies, but skills fire off whether you're close enough or not. Now some skills will fling your character forward, so you have to adjust accordingly. Your weapons have their own skills when equipped and even change according to which profession or class you're playing. So combat is rather varied between classes. So if you're the type of person that likes to mix it up and play and change up your weapon and different skills and rotation on the fly, you could do so. I do want to mention while a lot of character setups are viable, there is a meta. Each profession has an optimal setup for specializations you choose from. 
Now there is a lot of meta builds that is you can pick from from the type of player you are. But if you're not a meta player, well, have at it. Lastly, tank, healer, and DPS roles don't exist in this game. Sort of. All character professions have their ways to heal themselves, reduce incoming damage, etc. There are classes and professions that stand out or do better at certain roles, like the Druid, which is a Ranger Elite specialization that's really good at keeping itself and its teammates alive. With all this said, Guild Wars 2 Combat is fun and can stay feeling fresh with the ability to change your traits, skills, and weapons in a moment's notice. Leveling your first character will be a blast. Everything I went over in the exploration section will be huge in your first leveling experience. Plus the new card feeling and you know, you're learning your first profession. Now zones typically give you decent XP along with map completions. And if you happen to get a friend or two to play with you, it definitely enjoy yourself. Be sure to do your personal story quests for gear, lots of experience, and it takes you all over at Central Tyria to discover what it has to offer. Endgame is where a lot of the MMOs open up and Guild Wars 2 is no exception. Once you hit level 80, you have gearing which isn't an endgame chore like some other games. Ascendant gear is your gear goal but isn't the must take part in the endgame content if you understand what I'm saying. Like my suggestion is to get exotic gear as soon as you can to get into raids and fractals. Ascendant gear is obtainable by drops from raids, fractals, from some world events, meta events, crafting. So Ascendant gear is end game, but is no reason to rush it. Now, crafting your Ascendant gear is probably the most reliable way to get it, but it is locked behind rare materials that can only be crafted once per day. Luckily, most of these can be purchased off the trading post or Guild Wars auction house for a decent amount of gold. Crafting this gear can be a chore, but I assure you it is worth it. So when you get into this high level content groups for raiding and fractals, this is all account bound. Meaning if you make ascendant cloth gear, all the cloth users on your account can use said gear for all your characters. Same thing goes for cloth, medium and heavy armor. Just put it in a bank, grab it and wear it. Final note for gear. Do not buy gear off the trading post while leveling. Your personal story will give you plenty throughout, so save your gold until 80, and when you iron out your setup and purchase gear you need off the trading post. I also mentioned in the beginning where exotic armor would probably be your first goal once you hit 80, so get some of that and you're golden. <laughs> Raids, which aren't like other MMOs that have a huge gear requirement like others, having good exotic weapons and armor like I mentioned in the previous section, with a decent build and setup, you can hop in and give it a try. There is a lot of talk in Guild Wars community, which there's quite, you know, a lot of elitists going on right now when it comes to group finding and looking for group tool, running training runs, which typically are actually really good groups and you can find them on like a Friday Saturday night sometimes even Sunday night I found them where there's seasoned veterans of the game teaching newbies like me how to raid now raid bosses are capped to one kill per week per boss just like any other typical MMO um, and it's 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 good to get along with these um, training guilds or training runs to help teach you the mechanics because these bosses are legit they're pretty good the, the actual raid encounters are are, are, are fun, they're a blast. They're not as expensive as World of Warcraft is, but there are definitely a different take on raiding and you'll have plenty of fun with it. Now, why did why would you do raiding other than for the actual camaraderie of your guildmates, etc., and all that fine jazz? Ascendant gear. You get ascendant gear from these raids. You also get mats and tokens, which can be used to create or get said ascended gear so it's definitely somewhere where you would want to start if you're looking towards the pinnacle of endgame fractals are my favorite endgame content in guild wars 2 try to picture like mini dungeons that are unique from each other uh, most of these consist of anywhere from one to four bosses 
that has some cool mechanics and change according to fractal tier level. Each fractal has multiple difficulty levels that change mechanics, enemies do more damage as you get higher in the actual levels. There's also a party-wide debuff called Agony. Now Agony in lower tiers means nothing, but as you progress into the higher tiers, you need more resistance. So once you get into these said tiers of, of fractal levels, you need Ascendant Gear because you can only equip ag Agony resistance to Ascendant Gear pieces. So Ascendant Gear, once you start getting your Ascendant Gear and you you know, start diving into fractals, you kind of need Ascendant Gear to get into the top tier fractal runs, um, which can be, you know, a little off-putting at first. But by the time you actually start going into the higher levels of fractals to get those rewards, you kind of have this already in motion, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, why would you do these higher tier level fractals? Other than just the sheer difficulty and wanting to get better at the game, you get better rewards. So it's kind of the typical flip a coin, hard difficulty, hard rewards, better rewards, etc. Meta events are big public events that we've accustomed to in other games, but Guild Wars does them like a Michael Bay movie. Now we're talking hundreds of players working as a team to complete an objective. For some cool rewards, some skins, some crafting recipes, some achievements, some gear. Now, some of these spawn every 30 minutes to two hours to once a day. These are a lot of fun. And once you start learning them and which ones you like to do, it's always a nice thing to hop on like, okay, I got an hour to do this. And then this meta event spawns. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, for instance, I played a meta zone uh, or meta event in a zone called Silver Waste a couple times back to back to back to back to back. And before I knew it, I was about three to four hours deep with tons of materials for a crafting weight. My crafting my Ascendant gear. Nice. Dungeons are necessarily end game because the community tends to ignore these because they're really not supported. Now I've ran plenty of dungeons for weapons and armor skins to expand my fashion. And if you haven't heard, Transmog is pretty huge in Fashion Wars too. So I mean, dungeons, other than the actual running through for the story that the dungeons actually give you, which is a huge plus, you'll be running them for your Transmog sets. So if you are a tra Transmonger or you like fashion, this is where you'll spend some of your time collecting these tokens to buy these armor sets to then unlock them for your skin and putting them on any said piece of gear. It's pretty cool. Mastery tracks is the last end game goal I want to kind of bring up. Now I mentioned it a little bit earlier in the video and this is the Paragon slash extra leveling system that Guild Wars 2 implemented. Now mastery tracks are based upon which zones you are in. For instance, if you're in Central Terria, you can learn the masteries that allow you to create legendary weapons and armor and if say you're in pacifier maps you will learn the actual mastery track for mounts making your mounts faster tougher and even give it extra abilities which is pretty cool it's, it's another end game system that allows you to play older content and get some fulfillment and feel like you're actually progressing towards something there's always some kind of horizontal progression in guild wars 2 that a lot of people might be happy for and might actually enjoy. So with all this said, and there's quite a bit that's been said today, uh, it's also a lot to take in. Now Guild Wars 2 has a lot to offer for those who are not afraid of change of pace. Now, now leveling can perceived as linear, but once you hit level 80, there's so much more to do and it's overwhelming at first, which tend to leave a lot of people kind of not wanting to play the game for the simple reason that there's so much to do that they don't know where to get started and then they get frustrated now the one thing i will say is just level your first character play through your story uh enjoy the ride and once you get to level 80 then you can start planning out all your said stuff because other than the typical mmos combat and and the way you level and progress your character is a lot different so there's a lot more freedom you can do it how you please so i like to thank you guys for watching this video i hope you decide to give it at least a try and i'll talk to you ladies and gents next time
Peace out.